we go. A uh, couple of comments. First of all, this weekend I'm going to email to you another unit review complete with a handwritten answer key. Um, it's actually the first one that I used that I made myself years ago. Yeah, Amanda just got the joke. She's pretty answer key gets everything right all the time. She's great. My best student ever. Um, test is when? Wednesday. Tutorial is when? Tuesday. I'll also email you a link to my uh, last couple of tutorial videos that I've done on this unit. I know I have at least one online, so I'll e I guarantee I'll email you a link to one, and I think I have both of them online somewhere. So if you're looking to, hey, I'm bored, I got nothing better to do, I'm going to watch an hour of math just to kind of get a you know quick summary of everything. The only thing is, last year, I did logarithmic graphs and exponential graphs in this unit. Have I done logarithmic graphs and exponential graphs in this unit? So when you hear me talking about that in the tutorial videos, don't have a heart attack. It's not like, oh, I haven't, I've forgotten all of it. No, I haven't showed it to you yet. So there's probably going to be like a five minute little tangent where I go off in them. I'll try and find one from a couple of years ago where I didn't do exponential and logarithmic graphs as well, if I can send you that one. I've still have long enough. Here we go. Mark your own. Uh, you know what? This here means to write. Oh, no, 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 no. Everything's backwards because it's next to the X. That's my fallback. If it's next to the X or if it's on this side next to the Y, everything's backwards. Uh, the Y stuff is a bit more confusing because if they moved it over, it's no longer backwards. But since this is next to the X, it's not plus 2, 2 right. It's actually 2 left. So uh, this would end up there. Uh, you know what? That, right? Correct? That would be an example of what I would consider a C-level multiple choice question. But there will be about, I think there's 14 multiple choice questions on your test. I would say five of them will be on the, of this level of difficulty or variety. It's what we call in the, in the language K, which stands for knowledge questions, where you don't actually have to do any real math. It's kind of a think about it, circle it. Number two, that graph is shown below. The transformation which will not change the y-intercept, what they're really saying is, which transformation will leave that point there invariant? Now we have to do a little bit more thinking. Not only do we have to know what these do, we have to know how they behave on the graph. So this would be like a C-plus kind of a level question. Uh, let's see. This is a vertical stretch. You know what? That would move it to there. That's going to move it. In fact, you know what? I'm going to argue that anything that's vertical will change this. That's vertical. That's vertical. It's going to come down to the inverse or a horizontal. You know what? I think it's that horizontal reflection. I think if I spin it horizontally, it reflects about the y-axis. Zero left, right stays zero left, right. I think D is the correct answer. Did you notice, though, I glanced at the multiple choice answers for hints? That's a habit you want to develop this year. In particular, on your final exam, I can think of at least five questions where that will tell you what to do. If you glance at the answer, oh, I know what they want me to do. Where otherwise it's kind of, I'm not sure what they're going at. Okay, number three. If the function blah, blah, blah is translated four units to the left, then the new equation would be, as soon as they want me to find an equation, I fall back to listing what the replacements are, carefully cursed in, substituting them in with brackets and then doing any algebra as necessary to make my answer look like their answer. So 4 left means I'm going to replace x with x plus 4. What that would look like in my equation is y equals 3f of. The minus 5 would still stay. The plus 2 would still stay. But instead of an x, I'm going to have an x plus 4. I glanced here. I don't see that answer there yet, but I'm not going to panic. It probably means that they want me to do a little bit of algebra, a little bit of simplifying, a little bit of gal. Oh, I can gather like terms. That plus 4 minus 5, because there's no coefficient in front, there's nothing right there multiplying into the bracket. This is just plain old plus 4 minus 5. What is positive 4 take away 5 when I simplify it? I think this simplifies to 3f of x take away 1 plus 2. Do I see? Ah, I do see that somewhere. There it is, d. 
Roxanne, math multiple choice tests are probably the toughest type of multiple choice tests because when we make up multiple choice for the wrong answers, we think about the most common mistakes and we put those answers there. In other words, if you did x minus 4 because you thought 4 left was negative, uh, I guarantee that's there somewhere. Number four, this will be again a good example of a K question, a C level question as far as I'm concerned. How does that compare to that? First of all, horizontal or vertical and how do I know? Steph, horizontal, I would be going, no, no, I, I'm not even wasting my time. X to the X, everything's backwards. It's an expansion by a factor of five. Turn the page. Okay, the graph of this is shown. What's the domain of the inverse? Hmm, how are domains and ranges related for original graphs and inverses? Well, as it turns out, on your original graph, your domain, which is your, well, first of all, how do I find an inverse? Oh, too slow. How do I find an inverse? Okay, we're going to try that again with more of you moving your lips. You don't have to talk, but move your lips and at least fake it. Got it? How do I find an inverse? Oh, you didn't even move your lips at all. Back. Yes, I'm looking back there now. How do I find an inverse? Okay. Um, you said switch the X and Y. I'm going to also think switch the horizontals and the verticals. See, I think the domain of your original graph will become the range of your inverse. And the range of your original graph is going to become the domain of your inverse. So when they say to me, what's the domain of the inverse? It's actually going to be that right there. It's going to be from negative 1 to positive 3, but it's domain, so I'm going to have an x. It's going to be from negative 1 to positive 3, less than or equal to, touching, less than or equal to, touching, that. That's a really, 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 really handy trick. In fact, next unit, rather than memorizing two different graphs, we're going to memorize the first graph like crazy, and then we're going to recognize that the new graph is the inverse. So when I say, hey, what's the domain of the new graph? You're just going to say, oh, it's the range of the original, because you'll have that up here. We can cut our memorization in half. Oh, and you know what x-intercepts become on an inverse? They become y-intercept. And you know what y-intercepts become on... An inverse, they become the x-intercept. Okay, man, does that make sense? Okay, because you were looking very puzzled. Good, I read your body language correct. How do I find an inverse? Okay, so when you switch the x and y, what happens is your horizontals become your verticals, and your verticals become your horizontals. Let's actually graph the inverse just so you can see it. I'll do it in blue. Zero negative one would become negative one zero. Sorry, let me try again, Mr. Dewey. Zero, negative one, you have become negative one, zero. Uh, right here, the top of the circle, which is two comma three, would become three comma two. The top of the circle would be right there. And the bottom of this parabola circle, whatever this is, four negative one would be negative one, four. The inverse would look, if I could draw, the inverse would look like that. Okay? What's the domain? Isn't it from negative 1 to positive 3? And here's the easy trick. The domain of your original becomes the range of your inverse because you switched the x and y around. And the range of your original becomes the domain of your inverse because you switched the x and y around. Is that okay? Good. What is the horizontal translation of the function y equals 2, f of x minus 12, take away 1? f of 4x minus 12 in brackets. Take away one. Well, alarm bell, Mr. Book, that's wrong. This has not been factored out. I need to rewrite this as 2f of bracket 4 bracket x minus. Uh, when I factor a 4 out of a 12, oh, it's going to be a 3 right there. You know what? I think the answer is none of these. I think it's 3 right. Is that okay? Number seven, the function f of x is transformed 
to that thing there. 5 comma 5 is on the original. What's the new point? I'm going to list my transformations in the proper order. First, are there any expansion compressions at all? Are there any expansion compressions at all? No. What are you really looking for when I say expansion compressions? Coefficients, right? Numbers in front of the variables. Are there any reflections at all? Yeah? What? On the Y, on the F, I'm looking for a word like vertical or horizontal because I've never ever said to you, what's the reflection? On the F, vertical or horizontal? Okay, there's a vertical reflection. Are there any slides at all? To what? To what? Okay. By the way, you're going to have to play this game with me and participate, boys and girls. So wake up, sit up, do whatever you need to do, but give your brains a shake. Right now, I'm seeing drool from about eight faces. Come on, drink some coffee, do what it takes. I heard two right. Uh, what about this one? Uh-oh, it's on the Y side, so it's backwards. It's not four down. What is it? Four up. And if you don't believe me, if you plus it over, it would be a plus four. So four up. Now I'm going to list the point. I said to you the other day, when they give me a point, I write it. I list the tra First of all, I list the transformations. Then I write the point, and I'm just going to cross stuff out, moving outwards. Vertical reflection. Vertical is Y. That's going to be a negative 5. Vertical, it's the Y coordinate. 2 right. What's 2 right from 5? 7. 4 up. What's 4 up from negative 5? negative 1. I think the point is 7 comma negative 1, which is none. Oh, no, it is there. A. <laughs> this is so much fun, I want to turn the page. The graph of f of x is shown. Which of the following could be the graph of the reciprocal? Okay. Reciprocal would have a vertical asymptote right there. Correct? That's wrong. That's wrong. Got rid of two answers already. Oh, and anywhere one high and negative one high would be invariant. Uh, oh, that's wrong. Now, what's the best answer? B is wrong, technically. I'll tell you why. My friend who typed this, he used a computer program to graph this. That should be a dotted line, and his software put a solid line in for the asymptote. I don't like that, but the rest of this was so good that I said I'm going to keep it, and I haven't got around to retyping it or fixing it or anything like that. When you get your graphing calculators, you're going to find software has a real tough time with vertical asymptotes. It doesn't know what to do. It wants to try and connect the dots, and so it will often put a vertical line there that's not supposed to be there like this software did but clearly B is the best answer so I'll go with it okay Scott takes the graph of oh the parabola my favorite graph expands it vertically by a factor of three then translates it four units to the right Ian takes my favorite graph translates it four right and then expands it vertically by a factor of 3. The vertices of the two graphs are, oh, hmm, hmm. Well, since they're only asking about the vertex, why don't I move the vertex around and the vertex of the original is 0, 0. If I follow Scott, he expands that vertically by a factor of 3. If I expand 0, 0 by a factor of 3 vertically, how high am I now? Still 0. And then he moves it 4 right. You know what? Scott ends up right there. Ian moves it 4 right. And then he expands it vertically by a factor of 3. If I expand... 4 comma 0 vertically by a factor of 3, where will I end up? You know what? Still here. In fact, I think Scott and Ian end up in the same place.
<sighs> the graphs of this, the original, and this, the new one, are shown. If the original equation is, oh, wounded seagull square root moved three left, then an equation for this new one could be, what do you see? Have I stretched it vertically at all? No. Have I stretched it horizontally at all? In fact, they look the same size. Have I reflected it at all? Yeah, which way, Steph? Horizontally or vertically? Okay, there's a horizontal reflection, which means I've replaced x with negative x. So far, so good. If I replace x with negative x, let's see. If I take this equation and I replace x with negative x, the equation would look like this. which is uh, sitting there. That would end up there. That would end up there. That would, oh, you know what? I think that's all they've done. I think they've just replaced the x with negative x. Now, I don't like the way that's written. If I was graphing it from scratch, I would factor out a negative and do it in the proper order. But looking at the order that they've done here, Andrew, I have to say, I think all they did was that to a graph that had been moved sideways first. D. By the way, hopefully you went, it's not vertical, it's not vertical, and at least got it down to a true-false question. No way is it a vertical reflection, because that would be flipping it this way. I'm not even going to waste my time. Oh, and then hopefully you said, hey, square root graph moved three right would point that way. You could also get there by a process of elimination. Turn the page. Ooh. What's the horizontal translation? <gasps> do you know what I see, Steph? What do I see? I see a little alarm bell ringing at me right now because I noticed that that B there is in front of the X and there's a horizontal slide, but that horizontal slide is not in brackets with the B factored out. A ah! little alarm bell would go off, you see? Steph, don't even try and avoid it. I'll get you whenever I want to. I'm that good. I've been doing this for a long time. Good try. But now you got your adrenaline rush. Even better than that coffee there, right? Okay. Let's rewrite this as A absolute value of B. The real question is uh, what goes right there? Now, if I had given you this with numbers, almost every one of you would have got it. And so one of the things you're going to find on your tests, because this is what they did on the provincial, is if we want to make a question just a little bit tougher, we'll replace everything with what are called literals, variables. We'll put letters there. It's going to be the same math, Shannon, but most of you aren't as comfortable doing math with letters as you are with numbers. Shannon, what if it had said this, 2x minus 4, how would you have rewritten that puppy? Mathematically, what do you do to turn a 4 into a 2 using a 2? I think you divide. Oh, so if I hear you correctly, I think it's going to be minus C divided by B, isn't it? See how I reasoned my way there with an easier example? And that's what I often do. If they give me a nasty one, I'll say, well, it's got to work with the numbers, and I'll just do the same math with the letters. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's right C over B units. Okay, now we come to the written section. On your test, I won't ask you to graph more than one graph on one graph. A waste paper on the test, but on the quiz, I wanted to save a bit of paper. Um, let's see, they want me to do this one, which is 3 right, comma, 5 up. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Graph A looks like this, is that correct? One mark. One mark? One mark each. Graph B. Hey, that's the inverse. Switch the X and Y around. Instead of negative one, negative three, negative three, negative one. And instead of three over one up, one over three up. 
And instead of 7 over, negative 3 down, negative 3, 7 up. There's graph B. I think. By the way, half mark off for each point that's wrong. Katie, what's this one here mean? Absolute value. How do I find an absolute value, kiddo? Anything that's below the X is going to... Brilliant! Brilliant! I couldn't have explained it better myself. Uh, every, anything that's above is going to stay, so you would have to trace over this to show the marker, hey, I know this is part of the graph. If you left that blank, I would take a half mark up. That's part of the graph. Uh, and then instead of negative 3, it's going to be positive 3. And I think you end up with that. And instead of negative 3, positive. You end up with a little Martian hat or little ears or ogre cap or something like that. That's graph C. Okay. Leon graphs a function. The point 7, 4 is a point on this function. What are the coordinates of this point after that transformation there? Well, a little alarm bell would go. Got you with your head down this time. You see, I would have to rewrite this as negative F of. 2 bracket x minus 4. Turns out this is going to be horizontal compression by a half. <coughs> Vertical reflection for right in the correct order and once I factor. I'll just list my point, and we'll work our way outwards. Uh, horizontal, okay. Horizontal compression by a half. Instead of 7, it's going to be a 3.5, which isn't a hideous decimal. I'll survive with that. Vertical reflection. Vertical means Ys. Instead of positive 4, negative 4. 4 right. Uh, uh, right is horizontal, Kirsten. I'm going to 4 right from here. You know what? It's going to be 7.5. I think the point is, correct me if I'm wrong, 7.5 comma negative 4. Is that right? Yep. Uh, half mark for the x coordinate, half mark for the y coordinate would make good sense for a one mark question like this. This is so much fun. I'm just getting all these right. Oh, so happy. Getting my little nerdy math adrenaline rush, as opposed to my yelling alarm bell adrenaline rush. Okay, number three. Given that graph, write the transformations for A, B, and C in terms of G of X. One mark each. Hmm. What did they do for graph A? Ah! That's an absolute value because what's below the x-axis, Katie, has simply flipped right up. I think what they did for graph A is y equals g of x absolute value, like that. By the way, if you wrote f of x because you're so used to putting f of x, I'll live with it. But I think they used the letter g, did they not? So be consistent. What about for graph B? Oh. That looks an awful lot like a reciprocal kind of a thing. Let's see. Uh, yeah, one state invariant, one state in. Uh, you know what? I'm pretty sure graph B is 1 over f of x. G of x. See, I do it too. Be consistent. Mr. Duick, be consistent. You're right. C. Oh, you can get there by flipping it. That's one way. Now, there's actually two answers for C. I think the easiest one for me to spot was this one. Y equals G of, I think if you replace the X's with negative X's, it flips. That gets you one mark. Or if you put that answer down here, that would get you one mark. Because the other possibility, instead of flipping from here, to here. I think we could have just slided, slid, slid, moved. I think if we moved 
7 to the left, we'd also get this same graph. So y equals g of x plus 7. Now, I didn't specifically say what's another equation. That's the equation. I asked for the transformation. If you had just said 7 left, I'd give you one mark as well because this question wasn't completely clear. But probably most of you continued with the equation theme. Or if you put that there and you put that there and you said horizontal reflection. Did anybody do 7 left here because that's what they saw first? I'm just curious how your brains work. You did? Okay. The rest of you all said, oh, it's just flipped. Point being, there's now more, there's often more than one way to get to the same graph. Especially you can do a vertical stretch or a horizontal compression because when you stretch rubber this way, it does get thinner this way. Often you'll end up with the same graph if you're clever. Number five, this is much more like what your written section is going to look like. Your written section, I'm even going to tell you, it's going to have, I think, six graphs, maybe seven, can't remember. Uh, I'll give you some kind of generic shape like this. And now you can see what I meant when I said on the new graph, I'll put the original as kind of a grayscale dotted line. You can see it there very faintly. I hope it photocopied okay for you guys, right? And the way to do these is to make your list. Uh, horizontal compression by a half horizontal reflection. Horizontal compression by a half, negative 3. Compression, positive 3. Horizontal compression by a half, negative 4. Goes to negative 2. Reflection, positive 2. Connect them. Horizontal compression, negative 1. Reflection, positive 1. Connect them. 0, 0 doesn't, or sorry, 0, 1 is invariant. I would probably do this point next, so it's too right, compress it, reflect it, it ends up there. And I think the next point that I would pick is 4, 3, because that way I can still do nice math. If I compress 4 right by a factor of a half, I'll end up at, where was I, 2 right, and if I reflect it, I'll end up there. I think this ends up doing this. Now, here's the fussy marking. First of all, if you did that and that and got the same graph, you get one mark. If you did a horizontal expansion by two, but you did do a horizontal reflection, sorry, if you did that and you got the exact same graph as me, you get two marks, you get full marks. If you did a horizontal expansion by two, which is the most common error, but you still did the horizontal reflection, I give you one mark. Here is where I'd be nitpicky. If you didn't clearly stop right there, if you put an arrow there, I'm taking a half mark off, or if you didn't clearly keep going there, if you didn't put an arrow there, I'd take a half mark off, unless you went all the way to the end of the graph and stopped. We decided that if you go to the edge of the graph paper, that implies that you're continuing, that implies an arrow, but most of you are too lazy to draw that much. I certainly am. I'll just put an arrow there. Okay, so now we're going to be a bit fussier on whether it's continuing or, fancy word, discrete coming to a stop. B. Hmm. What number is in front of the X right there? It's invisible. Amanda. Oh, a little alarm bell would go off. There's a negative one in front of the X. And a slide. It's not factored. I need to rewrite this. Oh, yes, I do. I need to rewrite this as y equals f of. I'm going to factor out that negative 1, which will give me a positive x, and I'm going to write the positive x first. When I factor a negative 1 out of a positive 1, I think I get a negative 1. Boys and girls, this graph is one right, not one left. Little curveball there. This graph is one right, not one left. By the way, don't believe me? Multiply that out, Amanda. What's a negative x times sorry, what's a negative one times an x? Will I get a negative x? Say yes. And what's a negative one times a negative one? Will I get a pos in other words, I would get a positive one and a negative x in a different order. I also made this I was mean by changing the order. Welcome to the big leagues. This is going to be then horizontal reflection. One right. 
Horizontal reflection, boom, one right there. Horizontal reflection, one right there, connect them. Horizontal reflection, one right there, connect them. Horizontal reflection, one right there, connect them. And then since I'm not dividing by a number, so I'm not worried about decimals, I'd probably pick this point here. If I horizontally reflect it, instead of 2 over 3 right, it'll be 2 over 3 left and then 1 right. And I'd probably pick this point there, horizontally reflect it. One, oh, you know what? This is going like that. One mark for the horizontal reflection, one mark for one right. However, if you did any points wrong, you would lose a half mark for each point that was wrong. How many of you got that? Ooh, tricked a bunch of you. Oh, that's good then, because you just learned from your mistakes. Yes? Woohoo! That's the whole point of this. Turn the page. This is so much, so much fun, so much fun. Okay, ooh. I see three things here. I see absolute value with a twist. I see absolute value. I see vertical expansion by two. I see three up. What's the correct order? If I wanted you to do the absolute value last, here's how I would write it, Roxanne. Don't write this down. I would write it as y equals. That's if I wanted you to do the absolute value last. What if I wanted you to do the absolute value in the middle? That would be vertical stretch first, then absolute value, then one up, a three up. Here, I think I want you to do absolute value first. I said to you, we treat it like a bracket, like the bed mass rules. So this is going to be absolute value, vertical expansion by two, three up. Here we go. Absolute value. Katie, instead of below the x-axis by 4, I'm above the x-axis by 4. Vertical expansion by 2, 8, 3 up, 1, 2, 3. Well, I'm off my page, but only by 1. I won't freak out just yet. If I'm off by 6 or 7, I'll get nervous because I probably then made a mistake. Um, let's try this one here. This is another nice point. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Vertical expansion of 0 is still 0. 3 up. Were they connected? Then connect them. How about this one? Absolute value of 1 stays 1. Vertical expansion by a factor of 2 is 3 up. Let's do this point. By the way, I think I've made a mistake here, and I'll show you. go back and show you the subtle mistake in a second, because this is a weird one, and I think I took too many shortcuts. Uh, absolute value, 1. Vertical expansion, 3 up. This ends up being a lovely horizontal line. This point, absolute value of 2 is 2. Vertical expansion, 1 up. Let's do this point. Absolute value of 3 is 3. Vertical expansion, 1 up. Okay, this I'm good with. I'm a little nervous because this looked like it had a corner jagged part, and this didn't. I'm actually going to temporarily nuke that stretch right there. I'm going to do this point. Let's see. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Vertical expand it. 4. 1 up. Okay. I'm also going to do this point right here, which is 1 high. Hanging in midair. Absolute value. Sorry, what? Oh, I'm supposed to be going, what am I going, one up? And I did that the whole time? Like an idiot? That's why it looks so stupid? Candy. Why am I going one up? I don't know. Should we try this again? Scene one, act one, take two. Those of you watching online, let's pretend that never happened. Just fast forward. Anyways, uh, absolute value, vertical expansion. I did go three up on the first one. I got that one right. Woohoo! I'm going to do this guy, because this is a little weird one. And I said the absolute value ones I can't predict as much. Absolute value, double it, one, two, three up. I'll do this one. Absolute value doesn't go anywhere. Double it doesn't go anywhere. Three up goes there. Okay, that looks like kind of a little line right there. 
How about right uh, here? Absolute value, one. Double it, two, one, two, three up. Ah, does it go like this? Yes, I knew there was something weird. Something was bugging me. At least I knew something was bugging me partway through. You heard me say, I've done something wrong here. Um, how about right here? Absolute value stays one, double it, three up. Oh, how about we move over here? Absolute value stays, double it, two, three up. Let's go here. Absolute value stays, double it, there, three up, one, two, three. Let's go there. Does it do that? Is that what it looks like? People are nodding now? Okay. Uh, first of all, if you got that, three marks. Woohoo! Otherwise, I would mark this. If I was marking yours, I would say, did you do a vertical expansion? Can I see that things have been stretched? That would get you one mark. I would try and see if you'd gone three up. That would get you one mark. I would try and see if you had done absolute value, if everything below the x-axis had flipped, I'd be looking for this pointy part up. That would get you one mark, but then I'd take a half mark off for each point that was wrong. It's usually how I mark these. D. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I think I see three things going on here. I think I see reciprocal vert expansion by two and a vertical reflection. Okay. How would I do this? I think I would do the reciprocal as dotted lines, and then once I've done the reciprocal completely, I'll vertically expand it by two and vertically reflect it. I think that's the safest way to get there. I could probably do it all in one step. Ah, this is a quiz or a test. I'm going to hedge my bets. So I'm going to change colors. I'll go with blue. Reciprocal would be right there, right there. Those would be invariant. Uh, there'd be a vertical asymptote right there. And then this would shoot off to infinity. This would get lower. Whoop, not solid line, Mr. Duick. This would get lower and come to a stop right there because it doesn't go any further to the left. From this invariant point right here, I'm getting closer to zero. I think I would shoot off to infinity. This would be a horizontal line, one high. And now I'm getting bigger and bigger. I'm going to curve closer and closer and closer to zero. That's what the reciprocal would look like. Then I would take everything, double the heights, and flip it. Now I'm going to do the whole thing in one fell swoop just to show you that that approach also does work and because I find it easier. Are you ready? Reciprocal. What was the first thing that I always looked for on reciprocal points? The invariants. What were the invariant points? Anywhere how high? 1 and negative 1. So this is going to be an invariant point right here. Then I would vertically expand it by 2. Good on and vertically reflect it. It's going to end up right there. Negative one high is going to end up right there. This whole line is one high. So this whole line would be invariant. But then when I vertically expand it by two, instead of this whole line being one high, how high will it be? Too high. And then if I reflect it, instead of this whole line being positive too high, how high will it be? This will end up mm, down, except let's draw a straw, straw straight line, Mr. Duke. That'll end up right there. The asymptote won't move at all because the asymptote, if you stretch it or flip it, vertical, if you stretch it or flip it, you're still going to end up with stretch it or flip it. It's going to still be a vertical line. Where will this point end up? 
Let's see. Take the reciprocal. So instead of negative 4, what's the reciprocal of negative 4? It's meant to be really easy. What's the reciprocal of negative 4? Negative a quarter, right? Reciprocal, all you're doing is going 1 over the number. So what's the reciprocal of negative 4? 1 over negative 4, or negative a quarter. So I'd be right there. Expand that by 2. What's twice as big as a quarter? A half. Reflect it. This point would end up right there. And I think I would curve closer and closer towards it like that. See my little bug trick? Um, originally, we're moving closer to... I do the asymptote in the wrong place. No wonder you guys are confused. Good gosh, do it. I'm not on a roll today, am I? How about I put the asymptote right here where it belongs? Is that what you guys are saying? Caught my own mistake at least. Wow! Remember that adrenaline coffee joke? Apparently, you know, I know you are, but what am I? Apparently that, right? Okay. Um, Steph, I noticed that I'm uh, going closer to zero. That would shoot off to infinity but negative, but when I reflect it and stretch it, shoot off to infinity but positive. Is that okay? Uh, here, closer to zero, shoot off to infinity, but positive. Shoot off to infinity, but negative and faster. And don't touch the asymptote, Mr. Dewey. Here, we're getting bigger. What's the reciprocal of getting bigger? Getting closer to zero. But we'd also stretch and flip. I think it would get closer to zero like that. That's probably just above how hard I'm willing to ask you questions. That, that's nasty. That's an A plus or a very high A level. Now, how would I mark this? If, unlike me, if you got the asymptote in, one, in the right place, that gets you one mark. If... Unlike me, you got the invariant points correct. In other words, if you have a horizontal line at negative 2 right there, and you have a dot at negative 4.5 comma positive 2, that gets you one mark. If you got this shape correct, that gets you a half mark. If you got this shape correct, that gets you a half mark. So one mark for the asymptote, one mark for the invariant points, and one mark for the shape. That's how I mark these. In other words, I hope it's pretty tough to get zero on these because I'm hoping all of you can find the asymptote. You couldn't, Mr. Shut up! Let's pretend when we're wide awake and paying attention all of us can find the asymptote wherever the graph touches the x-axis or is zero on. Number six, find the inverse. How do I find an inverse? Oh, let's do that first of all. x equals 5y all over y plus 1. That gets you a half mark, but it also says you must isolate the y variable. Okay, we're going to cross multiply. We're going to get x times y plus 1 equals 5y. By the way, what's on the bottom of this fraction? It's invisible. 1, so it's 5y times 1, just 5y. I see all sorts of things now. People are like, hey, maybe I want to divide by the x. No, get rid of brackets. Trust me. xy plus x equals 5y. Now I see kids, they want to divide by 5 or divide by... Look. How many y's do I have? Two. How many would I prefer? One. Get the y's to the same side. How many y's do I have? Two. How many y's would I prefer? One. It would be wonderful if there was some kind of a little grade 9 mathematical operation that I could pull out of my back pocket that would somehow turn this from two y's into one y. And there is. 
What? GC, yeah, I can factor. This is actually x equals y bracket 5 minus x. And I missed it. I missed it, Amanda. I apologize because I was supposed to say to you, what is the GCF? And you were supposed to say back to me, because I asked you to. Why? I think we had that little dance last day, you and I, didn't we? Yes. The dance goes on. The dance goes on. Amanda, final step. How would I get the y by itself now? What's happening between the y and the bracket? So how would I get the y by itself? Divide by the whole bracket. It really is, in all honesty, math 8 and math 9 at a math 12 level, but there's not a single skill in there that we don't teach you in math 8 and math 9. Final answer, y is going to be x divided by 5 minus x. There is another possible answer, and it all depends on which side you move stuff to. You could also have gotten y equals negative x all over x minus 5. That's the same answer. It just depends when you cross-multiplied which side you moved stuff to. When I cross-multiplied, I moved those to that side. If you, if you had the 5y here and the xy there, and instead of getting the, instead you move the 5y over. Anyways, there is that. How would I mark this? How many marks is this one worth? Two? I would give you 0.5 if I saw that. I would give you 0.5 if I saw that. I would give you 0.5 if you got the y's all to the same size and I, side, and I would give you 0.5 for your final answer. Is you will find it is 11 plus 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 18, 20. I think it's 11 plus 20. Is the quiz out of 31? I hope it is. Woohoo! Quiz 31. Sort of. 31 marks is way too much for a quiz. That would make this by far the biggest quiz of the year. So here's what we're going to do. Take your score and divide it by 2. And we're going to make it out of 15. Now, technically, I should make it out of 15.5. Every one of you just got a free half mark because I don't feel like typing decimals into my marks program. I don't want a test ever to be out of a decimal number. So give yourself a score out of 15. Does that make sense? Just divide your score by 5. Now, normally, I would collect these, except I want you to have these to study from. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to hit pause. So let's continue with... Uh, all I had done is I'd given you a handout last day of, really, I'd gone through the provincial. I'd found some basic ones just to show you what they looked like. But then I started looking at old exams and trying to find weird curveball questions. If you're wondering, the handout initially, I think it said something like, more transformations questions on the very, very front of it. And we got to the very, 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 very last question. Yes? Okay. And what I'm trying to say is, what kind of, by the way, again, let's be very clear. There's not going to be 20 of these on your test. But absolutely, will there be a few curveballs? Yes. Okay. Guarantee there's going to be a question that you haven't quite seen before, but I've talked about this part of it, and I've talked about this part of it, and I've talked about this part of it, and one of the skills you're going to have to learn is to put those three parts together on the fly. The phrase you're going to hear me use all year is stubborn cleverness. I'm stubborn, I'm clever, I will never, ever quit. Now, what I will do, because it's almost always going to be multiple choice questions, Cassandra, as soon as I come to a question that I can't get in 30 seconds, I circle it and I come back to it because I'm a good test writer. I won't get bogged down in it. That's bad. So, what kind of extension questions can they ask you? We did a bunch, but you know, one of the ones they, we love to do is we like to give you... Uh, questions and ask how has the domain or the range been affected so I said to you the range of this function is negative 8 to 6 and I drew the simplest possible example I said you know what just so I can kind of visualize what's going on I think the negative got chopped off somehow uh, there's negative 8 there's positive 6 I'm just gonna draw a slanty line that's an example of a graph that has a range of between negative 8 and positive 6 what would the range of this be well, what's going on here? What's this 2 doing? Vertical or horizontal? 
vertical expansion by two. What's this mean? One up. So vertical and is one up also vertical? Okay, so if I write my original range, negative y less than, sorry, negative 8 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 6, range is vertical. That means this is going to affect the range and this is going to affect the range. How is this going to affect the range? Well, instead of a negative 8, it's going to be a negative 16. Instead of a 6, it's going to be a 12. How is this going to affect the range? Everything now is going to move one up. So instead of negative 16, you'll be at negative 15. And instead of negative 12, you'll be at 13. I'll write my final answer neatly. The final range here, negative 15 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 13. In fact, it's a moved one up because a, which we did last day, was a vertical expansion by two. All I did for part b is say, ah, oh, it's at a slide. What if I'd added a left-right slide? Would that change the range at all? What would that change? Domain. The domain. Because domain is horizontal, right? C. What's the range of that? Now, at one point, I saw Steph tense up. She got ready because she thought I was going to do an alarm bell thing. And I'm not because that would be a waste of time. You know why? Is that horizontal or vertical? I don't care what it is then. Is that horizontal or vertical? I don't care what it is then because can a horizontal ever affect your range? I didn't even bother doing the factory. I didn't need to because I said there's nothing vertical going on here. How possibly can the range change? Okay. Uh, I'm going to add one more here. Um, D E. Let's put a little F right here. What if they had done this? Negative F of X. What's your range? I, I, I got to be careful because you said eight negative six, except. We don't write it in that order. I, I, let's get the whole thing. What's the range? <laughs> this whole thing would flip, so the lowest point would now be... No, the lowest point would not be positive 6. The lowest point would now be negative 6, and the highest point would now be 8. Ah, this would go negative 6 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 8. Right? This one is surprisingly tricky. D. What's the range of the absolute value of that graph? I'm going to re-sketch it down here because I've scrolled down so much. So I'm going to say, here's my simple version of the graph where this is negative 8 right here and this is 6 right here. There's my simple version. What does the absolute value transformation do? Anything that's above the x-axis is what? In there, ooh, you even use the math word. I'm impressed. Yeah, in very that would stay as is. Anything below the x-axis is what? Reflected. This is going to end up where? Here. What's my new range? Careful. What's the highest I go? Eight. What's the lowest I go? Ah, zero. And this scares kids because when they're glancing at their answers, they would be saying, where'd the zero? But yeah, zero is the lowest and the highest is eight. And they're, where'd the six go? It turns out it got dominated by the eight. By far the toughest one is E. E is a nice question. And you know what? It's tough enough that once again, I'm going to re-sketch the graph here. 
and I'm going to put it way over here in the positive area kind of by itself so I can see what's going on. I'm going to say there's negative 8 right there. There's positive 6 right there. I'm going to make it nice and slanty. What would the range of the reciprocal be? Well, how would I graph the reciprocal? The first thing that I would do is I would find any invariant heights. Invariant heights would be 1 high and negative 1 high, about there. Correct? Correct? Then I would find any vertical asymptotes. Now, the way I've drawn this, there's a vertical asymptote right there. It doesn't matter how you draw it. I do know there would be at least one, though, if it goes from negative 8 to positive 6. It's going through the x-axis somewhere. Could be more than one. It could be bouncing up. But I don't care. I'm looking at simplest possible case right now. Then I would do my little bug trick. As I walk to the right, I'm getting closer to zero from below. I would shoot off to negative infinity. As I walk to the left, I'm going to get closer to zero because my original is getting bigger. Ah, but how low does my original go? How low? Negative 8. You know what? This would stop right there, and the height right there would be negative 1 over 8. Would it not? It's reciprocal. Right? Because if it was too high, it became a half high, three high. You know what? If the highest, if the furthest from zero you go is negative eight, the closest to zero you'll get is negative one over eight. And, and, and the same thing over here, by the way. Moving to my left, it touches zero, so it does shoot off to infinity. But moving to my right, Amanda, what's the highest this graph got? Amanda, sorry, Amanda Ward, what's the highest this graph got? What's the reciprocal of six? You know what? The lowest it's going to get is right there, and that's going to be a height of 1 over 6. What actually happens is, instead of having one range, you have two completely separate graphs, completely separate ranges. Yep. Uh, I'm... On the test, if I gave you this, I wouldn't give you any graph at all, but I would draw one to make my life easier to figure this out. Maybe you're clever enough to puzzle this out yourself. Great. Can I go back to my question? Um, can you see here, there are two separate graphs. This one, jump, and this one. They don't connect. The two red graphs don't connect. That means I'm going to have to list two separate ranges. How high does this graph go? It's a trick question. Infinity. How low? Touching? Yes. This has a range of y greater than or equal to 1 sixth, comma. That's the top part. The bottom part. How low does this graph go? Negative infinity. How high does it go? Negative one eighth, touching everything below and touching everything below and touching negative one eighth. That's a tough question. I'll let you think or ponder that a little bit. On, I know on one of my tests, I have a couple of different versions. On one of my tests, I like this question. I like this question. I think I ask you to take the range either of a reciprocal or an absolute value. I can't remember which one. Okay. Let it pause and percolate and think. When's your test? And I think I also see you Friday, I would imagine, of next week. That's when we're going to be starting the next unit. You want to try and, if you're planning on buying a graphing calculator, have one by then. Otherwise, on Friday, I'll hand one out to everybody. If you're planning on renting one, I'll let you keep it, and I'll start hounding you for the deposit check. If you're planning on buying one, I'll just say give it back at the end of class. I haven't looked yet, but you have agendas that probably say on there. I'm assuming with no Monday that they would move Monday to Friday. Just me thinking. That would make sense. Not that the calendar has to make sense, but that should be thinking. Okay? Yeah, I forgot a lot of things. 
There it is.